everybody for being here um, you know it meant, it meant a lot to us that each and every one of you spent time uh, obviously to come here I want to keep it not too crazy and, and, and long because um, I want to bring up our guests the people that you know you really want to see and uh, also after uh, after this brief Q&A just as a reminder we're having a big party downstairs it's literally one floor downstairs everything you can imagine to eat drink performers surprise performances from people in the film hopefully and uh, a lot of surprises, so it's going to be a lot of fun. It's literally just downstairs. And another reminder that on the way in, they handed you these little LA Film Festival cards. Um, you want to fill out that ballot, put number four, what we we'll started. Okay. And uh, without further ado, here's my, my partner, Cyrus, right here. So everybody get out. And, and, and I'll let our director moderate everything, but I was going to just bring everybody on stage and make it simple. Uh, first and foremost, let's welcome up Carl Cox, if you can come up here, Oh, yes, oh, yes. How amazing is Carl, by the way? Best. Literally the best. So, a true honor to have, have these guys here. Um, so, Carl's coming up here. And I'll also bring up Eric Murillo, who's here. I'd love to have Moby come up, who's here. And uh, any questions you guys want to ask as well, um, you know, please feel free. Do that. And give it up for Moby, please. Eric Murillo. Best looking on the end. So guys, how do you feel? That's emotional. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was um, quite emotional near the end. My sister was in near tears because actually there's a lot of outtakes of her interview that you didn't know that you didn't know about. And my mum actually died uh, a year ago right when I was happy, so she got emotional and uh, at the end I got emotional about that because um, my mum actually was very proud of my success and she knew about it before she took it to the ground. So, she loved it. Why was it important for you to tell the story? I mean, I can, I'll hand it over to Sarah as well. I think for me it was important to tell the story. I, I, have, I have no background in electronic dance music. It's uh, something I'm familiar with. I worked in radio for a number of years, so I had a lot of friends in the industry. but. It was brought to my attention by my 
Fred Cyrus over at a Hollywood Bowl concert, actually, that we met at. And he had seen a couple of my films, I believe, and was like, dude, we got to make a, a definitive film on this genre as close to it as possible because every you know picture that's been done on this genre is very promotional. It's about an artist or festival. It's always pushing something. Um, and here I didn't obviously be outside of the industry. I didn't have any agenda to push. And so after I did some diligence and um, you know, we really came up with how what's the interesting narrative to tell the story, how do we make it very character driven and who would be the perfect vehicles and once he introduced me um, you know to Carl Cox, I was immediately captivated as I'm sure all of you have been. And uh, and I was like, Can we get can we get this guy? And the second we were we were able to uh, you know convince Carl to, to do this and to trust us, um, you know, the second step was okay, well how do we how do we pick someone kind of polar opposite of this and uh, a story that can completely juxtapose, and we can kind of interweave a, a story that you wouldn't expect. Um, so that was the next step in, in, in talking to Martin, and, uh, and yeah, so it was an important story for me just because I was given trust by you know these gentlemen that are, are, are up here um, who have put their all their livelihoods, their life uh, into this industry, and it was very important for me to at least do it justice, do that justice, and do my very best to tell a story accurately, obviously as well as entertaining. Um, and so, yeah, it was something I, I saw an opening in that in that uh, area. I'd never seen a film that was, you know, had everybody in one film. And, and so, yeah, that was uh, one of the reasons for me that it was very important. And also, the fact that this music has such a, a cultural reference and, 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 and importance way above even just music. Uh, so, sorry. Um, I was a raver in the 90s. <laughs> And then I became a great promoter, and I kind of went through the same you know, trials and tribulations that the promoters that we showed me since still went through. Um, but I was in love with the culture uh, and for over 20 years. Um, a few years ago, I actually did see one of Bird's films, and, and I became a huge fan of it. Uh, I'll do a plug here, How to Make Money Selling Drugs. Um, and uh, and uh, for me, I think it was my favorite documentary in the past five years. And, I had a dream about telling the story of dance music for a very long time, and I tried a couple times, um, but I couldn't do it, A, because it takes a lot of money, it takes a lot of uh, logistical effort, it takes a lot of professionalism to make a movie like this. Um, and when I uh, met Bert, I kind of knew this guy was the guy who was able to do it. Um, and when we started actually working together, I was so you know pleased and taken back by, by the amount of dedication of Bert and Cassie. She's just incredible. Um, <laughs> This project, and, and you know, I knew first and foremost that when we mentioned Carl to Bert, um, Bert had to look him up and see who he is. Uh, he was just like taken back by, by Carl's accomplishments, and then I knew that Bert was the right person to make this film. So I'm hoping the reason came across in, in, in the film itself. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm really just, I'm, I'm speechless at the moment. <laughs> He was. I think he is outside. I was supposed to be. Well, if he's not here, uh, sorry. <laughs> because I was going to say, more than anything else in my career, someone basically is an unsung hero that has been there from more or less day one. Uh, on the movie, he said that I was uh, his sound guy. You know, I was uh, his kind of right hand man in all the parties that he did in his early days. Well, Paul really was the person that really helped me in my career as someone that I looked up to. So thank you very much for that for your lovely special support for where I am for people who I am today. So thank you Paul. Now he's not here, so he's somewhere in the building. Somewhere in the building. He's at the after party. Exactly. The after party already he's he's playing already that he's insatiable he's insatiable. Well we how about your experiences uh you know obviously you have such a uh, an amazing background. I think everybody here knows who you are. Uh, maybe just shed a little bit of light on, um, you know, why you participated in this film, and maybe you know how you feel like this film, uh, you know, the, the reference of the film, the importance of it, and why we were telling it. Uh, well, in my background is strange because I grew up playing in punk rock bands and started going to clubs like A7 and the Mud Club and Dance Theria in the early '80s. And I remember the first time I went to dance at Terry, it was to see Bad Brains. And I walked up to the fourth floor, and there was a disco DJ. 
And this is like 82, that, you know, you mentioned this, and like there was that fallow period when disco died and it just became underground dance music. And I remember hearing it and thinking like, oh, this is amazing. And so I came from punk rock and I got involved in the New York dance scene. And what I really liked, especially about the movie, was the historical context, you know? Because I mean, when we were outside of the red carpet, I was talking about like one of our first ever DJ jobs. I got paid $20 a night to play for six hours. You know, it works out to about less than $3.15 an hour. And it's interesting, like I'm sure that you have similar stories. I know Carl, you have every older DJ, we have those stories, and you compare and contrast that to Martin Garrix, who's really his first ever DJ gig was playing to 100,000 people. And not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's just, it's such, it's so odd that we're all making music with a 4-4 four, four kick drum coming from such completely different places. Like I remember one time, not to ramble on too much, um, I was talking to some kids in Europe about the origins of dance music. And I said, well, you know, it's gay, black, and Latino. And they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? And I was like, no, that's, that's where it comes from. And they thought it was white European music. And I was like, no. And you know, without the Paradise Garage, without gay, black, Latino disco culture, none of this would ever have existed. So kudos to you for including that in the historical context. Yeah, it was important to us to tell a story that was dropped in here. So it's very hard to tell the history and encapsulate it in any of it film. 30 years of, of history, uh, such rich history. Um, Eric, how about, how about you? Uh, and also, guys, feel free to just talk reform and, and you know, we'll make it quick, but I have a lot of things to say. Uh, all I want to say is that uh, congratulations, because honestly, a lot of people have tried to kind of tell a story, tell this story, but they always end up leaving something out. And you guys got underground people in there, you got the older, the younger. You kind of put it all together and, and put it in a way where anybody can understand it. And I think that it's really important, especially for me, I've been around for a long time, doing this for a long time. And a lot of people just, like you said, they just don't know. They just know from the minute that they jumped into the scene, what they what they know at that point, you know what I mean? But they don't know where it came from. And I just, I think that the way that you guys told the story and told the story of a legend, which, you know, if there was a, there was a Hall of Fame, you know, definitely one of the first inductees and you have no doubt about it. So the way you told this story, versus a young guy who's been like, you know, it, it's all happening so fast that he doesn't even know what's happening right now. And, but you know, you're very talented, obviously, or you wouldn't be here. And the way you told both stories and to leave all the people within the industry to kind of say, this is, this is where it came from and this is what I've been through, I think it's amazing, so kudos to you. Thank you, man. What, what, what are some like just brief stories or something like really like the most um, proof, like important time in your guys' career maybe? And also, where do you guys see the industry going and, uh, from here? Because that's a question I think a lot of people always ask, especially uh, in the last few years. Yeah, um, I mean, we had a crystal ball in, <laughs> in the world, what's supposed to happen in the future. I mean, we've never had a, a template of, of doing whatever we're doing, you know, I mean, especially Moby really was uh, one, one of the record that you put out called 1000, where the pitch just went on and on and on and faster and faster. You know, that record has never been equal at all, at any point in time. So that's your achievement, that's your landmark, that's what you did. And, and it was, and, and the thing was about that too, it was obviously very simple to do, you just turn fucking pizza. up, that's all you did. And then they basically put that kick drum in, and you sent people nuts by that tune. So, and then the other side of it, you're very calm and chill and relaxed. So, you know, it's, it's brilliant because there's no boundaries. There shouldn't be any boundaries. And I think the future is having no boundaries. We can go as far as we want for as long as we want. And, but at the same time, have fun by doing it. Because most of that, what we saw in the movie, is people having fun and having a good time. That's what it's all about at the end of the day. It's all we do. We try not to be too serious about what we're probably achieving because at the end of the day, we're happy together by what we're trying to achieve to move forward in, in our lives right now. You know, I mean, it, it did say at the beginning that it was the end, but actually to me, that's the beginning.
year. Yeah. I'm now started again. But what we started is what we started again. So I'm really happy to, I mean, 20, 20 years time, we'll do this again. <laughs> this, this is where we are. But I, I think this is the beginning now of the, of the new culture, new millenniums coming in with their new ideas and moving this thing forward. And we'll just watch over them and, and make sure that they do, you know, take the right path to, based on what we've created. You know, it's funny because one of my favorite moments, and I have quite a lot in the movie, was just the unbridled euphoria of it. And we sometimes forget about that because there's so many ways in life that we can be kind of joyless. But that's really what motivates all of this is that joy. You know, and whether it's a 17 year old kid throwing his hands in the air at some terrible top 40 Katy Perry remix, or Someone in an underground. She's here. Yes, yeah. I love Katie Perry. She's a neighbor of mine. I'm not not criticizing her. I'm criticizing necessarily the DJs who play the ball. Yeah. And it's like, um, but that euphoria, and it's so odd that like we're so capable of it. It's so powerful, and generally it's such a tiny part of our lives. You know, that it's this minuscule, compartmentalized fraction of our lives when clearly it's so important to us and so powerful. But I mean, how many people here in the last week have had a transcendent, joyful experience? Yeah? I mean, not lots of fun. And then the last thing is the future, one of the wonderful things about dance production it's so egalitarian. You know, it used to be back when we were young and had hair, um, that in order to make dance music, yeah, I know, it's like, yeah. um, in order to make dance music 20 years ago, you need a studio full of equipment. Now you need a laptop with some pirated software. And so it's so democratic, so egalitarian, and it's getting to the point where like, any person on the planet even with their phone, can make phenomenal sounding electronic music, which means that, of course, content is a lot of it, but how wonderful that someone in Japan, right now, on their laptop, is making a song that's going to be a huge hit in Mexico. You know, so that, that dem the democratic egalitarian quality, of it, I think, is really powerful as well. Uh, I think for me, two things. Uh, one of my favorite experiences in my career and what I've been through when I would pick it up when they ask me what's like, one of your best experiences, it, 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 it kind of it encompasses a lot of things in the film, which is one, Space Terrace, which is unbelievable, two, September 11, uh, when all the airports were closed and they, there were no flights, nobody, you know, there was no flying anywhere, and I was supposed to play the closing party of space, and I was closing the terrace, and worrying that whether I was going to get there or not, or what happened, finally they opened the airports, and I got there, and it was unbelievable for me because the last record I played was uh, French Sinatra, New York, New York. And back in those days, people didn't bring flags to clubs. That, you know, that's something they do now in festival. And having everybody pull out American flags, and the visa is made up of all nationality. Nice. American would be probably the smallest, uh, you know, most British, a lot of Europeans. And having all those people singing that song, and again, euphoria, which goes right now. Um, coming together, and that is what dance music is. It's all like-minded individuals who share the love and passion of dance music, coming together to let go, release, and have a really great, great time. So for me, that's one of my special moments. And as far as where it's gonna go, like I said, it, uh, like Carl said, there are no boundaries, so the more you push it, the more you try something, maybe it'll be a polka record mixed with dance music. Who knows what it's gonna be, but, we know when we hear it. We know when we hear the record as a DJ. You just put the needle on or you just press play. You know right away if you like that record. Sometimes it takes a couple of days, but usually, first play, I know if it's a record I'm gonna play. So it's gonna go wherever it can go and it's gonna go everywhere. Is there any... Uh, we'll take like one, like two or three questions at the most, but uh, then we'll go party. Uh, you guys all better be coming downstairs with these guys because I promise you, you will be happy you did. Uh, is there anybody that has any like questions for anybody up here? This is your one moment. Okay, you're all scared. I can't really see right now. So, oh, the back row. Your hands up to stop. Why did you call it what we started? It's 
a good question. Um, you know, it's funny when um, when we were thinking of games. Obviously, in any film, you you come up with you know ten different titles and you narrow them down and you start talking about them. Um, I'm not gonna lie, a couple people on my team had to hit me up and uh, after we announced it, said that we should change the title from what we started. I said it's a little late. Why would you not call me yesterday? <laughs> um, true story. And they're angry right now, but I love them. Um, so I mean, I think for me, it encompassed what these guys began, and it comes full circle. Um, I think you know, like I said, telling a historical piece but telling it in a nonlinear way, um, and it's, it's it's something that these gentlemen actually, you know, it, it, were part of creating history. And uh, I think for me, what we started was was something that just encapsulated uh, a lot of the feeling in the film, and I felt like it was something that uh, could resonate with a lot of people, whether you're into electronic dance music or not. Any other one? Go ahead. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, not a critical question, but just from someone who doesn't really know the scene. Are there women in, in your midst? Of not enough. <laughs> We have one in here tonight. Paris Hilton's here. And, yes. Now, we have a lot of, there's, a, there's a lot of really great DJs here, truly, um, that, are, that are female. I think for us, um, you, you, Cyrus can only mention talk about more than I can. There aren't enough. Is anyone in here that wants to? Eric, Eric, Eric knows women in well. <laughs> I like women, so no, um, I, I definitely think that uh, there have been throughout a number, at least last year. There's, a, there's been a lot of DJs. Um, you know, some some of the, most DJs, I'll say 85% of DJs, it's about the records that you make. It's not just about being a DJ. It's definitely not just about what sex you are, but it's about records that you made that have gone on to become humongous, and that is why you would become a star in the industry. I think that you are going to see over the next 10 years. So many, because I know so many, there's techno, there's houses, so many, and now they're making the music to match, and I think that that's what's been uh, missing. But yeah, you know, being a woman in this industry is tough. It's tough because, you know what, as soon as you go play somewhere, oh, she did this to do that. And it's like, no, it's not true. People are talented. They just, people, they just, some don't get the opportunity, or when they do, it gets kind of diminished by people saying stupid, ridiculous things. But you, I think over the next 10 years, you're going to see a lot more. And you got Nervo, you got a lot of girls that are coming through. But, you know, they're making music, and that's what it's all about in this industry for 80, 90% of the people. Anyone else? Last question? So, yeah, go ahead. Last question. To be honest, um, one of my peers that I also grew up with for many years, and he's a French DJ, his name's Laurent Garnier. Um, he's such a, a, an amazing, prolific DJ, um, which truly believes in the sound of, of, of electronic music in the future, uh, but not forgetting the past, and he can play also for hours and hours on end, and you just don't know where he's going, but he's going to take you there. And uh, for me, he's definitely one of the DJs that I inspire to. And, and I, when I see him play live, it's, uh, it's encapsulating. It's, it's something that I've never seen before. It would have been nice to actually have, have him on the movie from a French point of view. Well, he you might be at the after party, so. Part two, part two. Say so part two. Part, part two. Part two, part two. <laughs> so I don't know if it was the best DJ set I've ever seen, but it was, you remember Nels? So Nell's on 14th Street, one of the first times they let me in, I think it was 89, and I was dancing next to Prince, and the DJ played A Day in the Life by Todd Terry. Yes. And it was the first time I had heard house music that loud, and it felt like the heavens opened and like God was smiling at me. Um, Okay, so my one of my favorite DJ sets that I ever saw somebody else do um, has been this man right here. His energy, the way he dances, the way he sweats, the way he just does it with a smile on his face, 
grabs the microphone out of nowhere. Oh yes, oh yes, Tequila, let's do it. That you know, your energy is never uh, duplicated, brother, and uh, definitely inspires. So definitely, that's one of my guys. To the legends, to the guys, what we started. Carl Cox, Kobe, Earth, Maria. We so fill out your forms. All you have to do is circle while we started. Make sure you put it in the pit, and then literally, as you walk outside, we're gonna go down the escalator and first of all, we'll literally one floor down, and we're gonna escort you to a phenomenal party. I promise you, different thing. Typical parties. And call my play. No pressure. It's right behind the Starbucks. Right behind the Starbucks. Thank you guys very much.